As India looks forward to setting up its own space station by 2035, the Indian Space Research Organization, or ISRO, is developing its next-gen launch vehicle to barge into Elon Musk's zone. Chairman of the ISRO, Dr. S. Samanat, has revealed the ongoing development of a next-gen launch vehicle to replace the decades-old polar satellite launch vehicles that have been the backbone of several of the Indian Space Agency's missions. PSLV has to retire today, tomorrow, or a decade later. PSLV is a 1980s-era technology and can't be used for missions in the 2030s. It's not correct. Samanat said during his keynote address at the Three-Day Engineers Conclave 2022 event, which opened at the Liquid Propulsion Systems Center, or LPSC, in Valiamala, Iruvarantapuram, on October 13th. The PSLVs will be replaced by the underdevelopment NGLV, which ISRO review views as a cost-efficient, three-stage-to-orbit, reusable heavy-lift vehicle with a payload capacity of 10 tons to geostationary transfer orbit. We are working on a new generation, next generation launch vehicle of India, which, which should be, in terms of the cost, it should be better, in terms of manufacturability, it should be better, in terms of reusability, it should be there, and we should be able to produce it much faster. Samanat said, without providing any further details about the current progress and timelines. The NGLV will be propelled by cost-effective and more efficient semi-cryogenic propulsion, comprising refined kerosene as fuel and liquid oxygen as an oxidizer for the booster stages. The NGLV will reportedly have a simple and robust design to realize bulk manufacturing, modularity in systems, subsystems, and stages, and minimal turnaround time. It'll potentially be used for launching communication satellites, deep space missions, future human space flights, and cargo missions. We believe at least 10-ton capability to GTO is needed. Correspondingly, the low Earth orbit capability will be twice that. However, payload capability will be lower when the rocket is reusable, Samanat said. This is because in a reusable launch vehicle, the vehicle has to be slowed down for re-entry into the atmosphere and then landing. Some fuel has to be reserved for recovery, which cannot be used for forwarding thrust toward orbit, thus reducing the payload capacity. Nevertheless, reusing launch vehicles goes a long way in reducing the cost of space exploration by eliminating the need to build a new launch vehicle for every mission that must be placed in orbit. Elon Musk's SpaceX has developed a reusable rocket launching system that allows it to reuse the first stage of its Falcon 9 and Falcon Heavy rockets. The first successful recovery happened in 2015, and the first successful relaunch occurred in 2017. Since no more details are available about the NGLV program, it can't be said whether an entire stage of the NGLV will be reusable or only some components of a stage. Veteran Indian Air Force fighter pilot and an analyst-slash-columnist with the Eurasian Times, squadron leader Vijayendra Thakur, noted that ISRO is known to have been studying the possibility of recovering components from its existing launch vehicles for quite some time. Apart from that, ISRO is also pursuing a two-stage-to-orbit fully reusable launch vehicle, as part of which the agency has built a winged reusable launch vehicle technology demonstrator that is designed to take off like a rocket and then glide back to land on a traditional runway like an aircraft. The RLV is planned to be developed through a series of experimental flights, including the hypersonic flight experiment, the landing experiment, the return flight experiment, and the scramjet propulsion experiment. The hypersonic flight experiment, or HEX, was conducted in 2016, which involved the orbital insertion, deorbiting, and recovery of the winged RLVTD over the sea. The landing experiment, or LEX, was reportedly conducted in April of this year, which involved taking the RLVTD to an altitude of 2.3 to 2.4 kilometers and at a distance of 3.7 kilometers from an airstrip at Chitradurga, Karnataka, aboard a helicopter after which it was proposed to be released by Glide on its own and land on the airstrip. In Falcon reusable rockets, only the lower stages of the rockets are recovered, which are not very expensive, and the upper stages are lost in space. But the ISRO's RLV program is much more ambitious than SpaceX's Falcon reusable rockets, as the Indian Space Agency also intends to recover the upper stages of the rocket that have the most 
complex and expensive electronics, which means the cost of rocket launching can be cut dramatically. ISRO plans to have the design of the NGLV ready within a year and offer it up to the industry for production, with the first launch tentatively scheduled for 2030. According to a presentation made by Mr. Samanat at a conference earlier this month, the NGLV could offer launch costs of up to 1900 USD per kilogram of payload in the reusable form and 3000 per kilogram in the expendable format. But what about the existing PSLVs and GSLVs? Samanat said that the PSLV rocket has done more than 50 launches and will be used in another 30. He highlighted that the PSLV is a three decades old technology, its costs cannot be reduced further, and toxic and carcinogenic fuels power it. Samanat also stressed the importance of keeping pace with the evolving launch vehicle technology, as he noted that the PSLVs are built using traditional manufacturing techniques. He also said that the same applies to the GSLV rocket while noting that the GSLV Mark III rocket is an exception, as it is a relatively new vehicle. Nevertheless, India's lift vehicles are far behind those launched by countries such as the US, Russia, China, Japan, and Europe, which average payload capacities of at least 22 tons. Heavier payload capacity allows more scientific instruments to be added to a mission, leading to more scientific experiments and data collection. That said, plans are underway to develop a heavy lift launch vehicle carrying up to 16 ton payloads to GTO. But then again, India does produce the best brains that have been part of several space missions elsewhere in the world. Earlier this year, the government announced a policy to boost private participation in space activities, providing an opportunity for private companies in satellites, launches, and space-based services. Along with this, the new Indian National Space Promotion and Authorization Center, or In Space, was formed to assess the need and demand of private players, including educational and research institutions, and explore ways to accommodate these requirements in consultation with ISRO. This opens up new avenues for private players in not just space exploration, but in satellites and other associated domains. With these announcements, India now stands on the cusp of building a space ecosystem, with ISRO being the guiding body large enterprise and conglomerates diversifying into the sector, pulling up the value chain, the SMEs to produce sub-assemblies. With startups and technology innovators, India can now evolve as a space startup hub for the world. And that's another one in the books. Thank you so much for watching, and if you enjoy what my team and I are doing, you can become a patron through our Patreon link in the description below. Otherwise, as always, this is Kevin with Great SpaceX, and my team and I will see you next time.